What is up everybody? Joe Everest, the fence expert. Today I'm with Caleb Roth with Expert Professional Wood Care, Stain Steel Experts, to talk about the top five mistakes you see homeowners and new staining professionals make. We're basically trying to help avoid some heartache here, is that right? That's right, Joe. Everybody's driven through a neighborhood and seen these awful examples <laughs> of stained wood, and so maybe we can do something to kind of clear some of that up. Yeah, basically take a fence from looking like this to looking more like this. These are actually demonstration panels that you just had brand new staining professionals uh, apply stain to, is that yeah, right? Yeah, well, I, I don't want to say professional, that's a strong word. Most of the people here had never done this before, yeah. so yeah. Uh, great result with uh, zero experience. So, Absolutely. And I think we can get most people to do the same thing at home. Very good, so we've got five, five mistakes to avoid when sanding the next fence. Yeah, and I think the number one mistake that I see is people wait too long to stain their fence. Okay, okay, what do you mean? Well, you know, your granddad, your grandpa, uh, the guy at the paint store, the lady you've, you've talked to across the street, everybody says, well, you gotta wait a year. You gotta yeah. let it season. You right. gotta let it go a full season, maybe two seasons. A lot can happen in a year. Sure. So UV damage, turning gray, mold and mildew can grow, dirt, debris, things like that can clog up the pores. Yeah. And so the problem is, is whatever you stain, uh, it's gonna highlight the good, the bad, and the ugly. So if, if you're sense. staining a gray fence, you may have to wash it. If you're staining a fence that's got sprinkler marks or anything, all of those are gonna show up. So waiting too long is the thing. So I recommend as quickly as you can get it stained. Okay. Just a couple weeks after installation usually is more than enough. You got it. And so they should probably, if they've got a fence project scheduled now, would be probably the time to reach out to someone to start uh, figuring out. Most contractors are gonna be a couple weeks out, so certainly wanna get a contractor or at least get a plan to do it yourself. Very good. Mistake number one, waiting too long. All right, Caleb, on to mistake number two. Okay, so the biggest one we see is people jumping into a project without checking the moisture on it. Okay. So when a fence is new, to particularly treated pine, it's gonna be wet. It's gonna yeah. come right out of the, you know, right out of the mill, it's gonna be very wet. Sure. And so you can use a moisture meter, Home yep. Depot, Lowe's carries them, or you can do the back of the hand check. You can stick the back of your hand on the fence or your palm of your hand. Okay. If it feels cool, then it's generally too wet. If it feels nice and dry, it's probably nice and dry. Okay, if we're using a moisture meter, what are we looking for as a readout to tell us that this fence is ready? So you're looking for 13% moisture content okay. or less with most stains. And even some water-based products claim you can use it in 20 or 30% moisture content, but yeah. the wood's not able to accept the stain at that, so it's really sure. best to try to get it under 13%. 13% or less. Yep. You heard it here. So mistake number two, not checking the moisture content of the wood before you stain it. Caleb, what's the third mistake? Probably the third mistake that I see is people not doing proper prep. So cut-ins, prep work, things like that. Yep. So as a stain contractor in Nashville, we see a lot of times we'll go to people's homes who've had a new fence installed, but the old fence, there's still signs of the old fence. Sure. There's overspray all over the house where somebody, a contractor, a homeowner, sprayed stain all over the house. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, uh, it's on the driveway, on the air conditioner, what have you. But the best thing mm -hmm. we have found to do is go ahead and take the time to mask things off. There's a lot of tricks you can do to avoid overspray and things like that, but the best policy is just to mask everything off. If you're next to a house, cut it in by hand, things okay. like that. Gate hardware, yeah. if you're using a water-based product, you would want to mask those things off as well. Got it. So third mistake is not taking the time to do the proper prep work. All right, that brings us to mistake number four. Mistake number four is 50-50, I'm actually gonna say it's probably 30-70. 30% is people using too much stain. 70% okay. is probably not enough. That's typically what I yeah. see, yeah. Yeah, we, we see a lot of people all the time that uh, they've got 500 feet of fence and they think it needs a you know seven gallons of stain. Yeah. But the thing is, is it's to protect the fence properly, you wanna put a lot on there. When you go to the beach, you put on a lot of sunscreen, Absolutely. you need to put a lot of on this fence here. So you really wanna make sure you get a nice even coverage and make sure you get it on there enough. And if there's sure. not enough on there, you're gonna be able to tell. So uniformity generally will tell us if we got enough on there or not. So mistake number four is too much or not enough stain. All right, Caleb, we're ready for the fifth mistake you see homeowners and contractors yeah. make. So everybody has drove through the neighborhood and seen that fence that just looks terrible. Usually it always comes from inconsistent application. Yeah. I don't want to say improper yeah. because a lot of people don't know what proper is. Sure. So the best way to do a proper application is try to be as consistent and as uniform as possible. Okay. So we see some people doing the top half and then the bottom half. The some time. products are not forgiving and they will cause a line in the middle. Yeah. You see overlapping 
uh, you just see a lot of different things and uh, really trying to be uniform and consistent will really make a big difference in your stain job. So when we're talking about uniform and consistency, that's probably, I think what we're talking about is one solid application from the top to the bottom uh, with as little overlap as possible. Yep, you're exactly right. Very good. Now, you said you've got a bonus for us. I what do, is the I have e a bonus. bonus. Well, the biggest mistake, this is the biggest, the number one problem we see is people are using the wrong product. Got it. They're using something that's hard to use. It flashes dry quickly, making it hard to apply. It, there's weather restrictions. It could freeze. Some water-based products can actually cause warping, cracking, and twisting. So um, we have figured all that out, and that's it's right on your hat. It's expert stain and seal, and we yep. believe strongly in that. And there's conditioning oils in the stain to stop warping, cracking, and twisting. There's enough oil in it and a lack of solvent, which means you got gravity will do all the leveling for you. So as long as you put enough stain on the fence or the deck, it's going to level itself out. And so that's the biggest thing is getting the right product in the, in the person's hand to use that makes all the difference in the world. And we recommend Expert Stain and Seal. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. I think a fair point to make here, though, is some of the products out there can look good when applied by trained professionals. Someone that's done this for a lifetime, has all that experience. But if we're talking about the homeowner, the new contractor, you really got to be careful what products you use because you could really mess up a fence. Yeah, I agree. Really, the icing on the cake here is the fact that this panel was stained by folks with little to no experience. Heavier on the no experience than the little experience. I think it looks great. Let me know what you guys think of the top five. What would you do differently? What do you think about this fence? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors.